first time ever, an object from interstellar space has been observed to visit our solar system. Oumuamua is the first known extraterrestrial to visit our solar system. Since it was initially discovered, many scientists and the general public have been both intrigued and alarmed by its visit. When Oumuamua was discovered for the first time by the PanStars telescope in 2017, it made headlines. There are numerous hypotheses concerning this unknown object. It was an object item from the minute it was found, with an odd orbit, an odd speed, and odd features. The weird object was the solar system's first known encounter with an interstellar object. However, the strange visitor was only visible to astronomers for 11 days until it became too small and faint to be seen. The exact nature of Oumuamua remained a mystery given the limited information gained from such a brief observation window. However, this is no longer the case, in no small part due to Neil deGrasse Tyson's public unveiling of previously classified photographs of Oumuamua. What's the unexpected reason for our interplanetary visitor? Is it a spy from space? What's the deal with this far-off visitor from another planet? Join us as we explore the declassified photos of Oumuamua revealed by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Astronomers in Maui, Hawaii, saw what they believed to be a comet or an asteroid on October 19, 2017. It was the first interstellar object except for dust grains ever spotted in our solar system. So when scientists recognized its slanted orbit and rapid speed indicated that it came from outside our solar system, they gave it the Hawaiian name Oumuamua, which means a messenger from afar arriving first. Many questions about Oumuamua remain unanswered and we may never know the answers. Where exactly it originates is one such mystery. The only thing we know for sure is that it came into our solar system from a direction roughly corresponding to the constellation Lyra. It is only possible to speculate on where Oumuamua came from since star positions were different when it first strayed from its own solar system. We do know that it almost certainly did not originate in our solar system due to its extremely high relative velocity to the Sun. It's also probably not going to get captured and put into a solar orbit, so it'll just be a brief guest. We may never know for sure, but it's plausible that Oumuamua has been through the cosmos for millions or maybe billions of years before making its way to our solar system. Its trajectory to us was likewise roughly perpendicular to the approximate plane in which the vast majority of planets and extrasolar objects orbit the Sun. This suggests that none of the major planets in our solar system were encountered within a safe distance. However, a group of researchers who have done recent work believes they may have a clue. They think we can narrow down its origin to one of four possible stars. In order to reconstruct its course before visiting Earth, scientists analyzed data from the European Space Agency's Gaia spacecraft after taking into account the gravitational pull of our solar system. The red dwarf HIP-3757, the solar-like star HD2 92249, and two more stars lacking convenient names were all considered candidates. We have no notion what Oumuamua looks like, despite the countless internet-wide depictions of it. To this day, all that can be seen of it through telescopes is a tiny pinpoint of light. We can confirm that it is in a tumbling motion through space and that it has a shape similar to a cigar. In that regard, its length dwarfs its width by a factor of around 10. Most objects in space have a length-to-width ratio of no more than 3 to 1, which is a curious fact. This is because every 8 hours or so, the interstellar object's brightness, or amount of reflected sunlight, changes by a factor of 10. This points to the fact that Oumuamua is very, very long. Using the same set of observations, scientists have also deduced that it must be falling across space. As it inevitably headed our way, it served as a kind of flashing light. It was only in the solar system for a short time, we have now lost sight of it. However, its extremely low albedo is reminiscent of a hard metal surface that has been oxidized by cosmic radiation. Aside from that though, it is anyone's guess as to what this alien guest actually resembles. Oumuamua appears to have gotten a slight increase in speed at some point during its approach towards us. Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based observatories found that it was moving slightly off track due to an increase in acceleration. We were able to determine that something other than the sun's and planet's gravitational pulls were influencing Oumuamua's trajectory through extremely precise position readings. 
We may never have a definitive answer, but we can speculate on possible causes. NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, CNEOS, scientist Davide Farnokia said, Jets of gaseous material ejected from the surface of Oumuamua presumably cause this additional subtle force, and similar outgassing affects the motion of many comets in our solar system. However, this is merely a theory. Unlike other space tourists like comets, Oumuamua was not seen to release any gas into space. It's possible that the outgassing ejected some dust particles from the surface, which added a bit of speed. Once something like a comet enters our solar system, it can throw up a lot of dust and gas as it heads toward the sun. All the data we have on Oumuamua, however, suggests that this is not what happened. Because of this, some researchers have proposed filing the item under the asteroid category. However, it may have generated a slight speed boost at some point during its approach due to the aforementioned kicking up of dust particles and or gases. We are aware of its superior reflectivity. Given its modest size in particular, at least 10 times more reflective than typical solar system asteroids, Oumuamua stands out among its peers. We can't be certain of its composition beyond that. Its surface hue is odd, and experts at Queen's University in Belfast agree. They interpret this to suggest that, rather than being made of metal, it has a carbon-like protecting crust. They also speculated that it may have resembled a typical comet in its earlier days. Since then, exposure to cosmic radiation has radically altered its chemical makeup. In addition, there may still be ice deep within. If the carbon-like crust was at least 20 inches thick, it would have shielded the surface from the sun's radiation and prevented the formation of any traces. Oumuamua has provided astronomers with one more enormous mystery as it exits the solar system. It appears to be speeding, traveling away from the sun at a slightly quicker pace with each passing day. Because of material outgassing, comets can have odd acceleration profiles, thus this wouldn't be the strangest thing. However, no similar activity was seen in Oumuamua. With the help of increasingly powerful telescopes, scientists have traced Oumuamua's orbit and established that it has completed one orbit of the Sun and is now departing the solar system. The asymmetric and periodic fluctuations in Oumuamua's brightness led scientists to conclude that it was extremely elongated and spinning on its end. In addition, astronomers detected a modest outward acceleration, larger than that reported for asteroids and more typical of comets. Astronomers found this entire situation to be really peculiar. Comets are simply dirty snowballs that occasionally orbit far beyond the orbit of the Earth and approach the Sun. Water and other molecules are ejected from a comet as it is heated by sunlight, creating a brilliant corona and often tails of gas and dust. A comet's course is somewhat modified from the elliptical orbits typical of other objects like asteroids and planets by the gases it ejects, which function like the thrusters on a spacecraft. When Oumuamua was first discovered, scientists were left to hypothesize wildly about its composition and what was propelling it outward because it lacked a tail and was too small and far from the sun to collect enough energy to spew much water. Is hydrogen iceberg a possibility? A big, fluffy snowflake propelled by the sun's light pressure? A spacecraft or sailboat made of light materials by an advanced alien race? However, Bergner investigates the chemical processes that take place on frozen rocks in the freezing conditions of space. A specialist in extrasolar objects, Daryl Seligman was a postdoc at the University of Chicago and is currently a National Science Foundation postdoctoral researcher at Cornell University. She thought there might be a simpler explanation and decided to explore it with him. They speculated that maybe the hydrogen fuel gave it that unusual boost. Hydrogen is formed when a comet is cooked by cosmic radiation as it travels through the interstellar medium, as Bergner explains. We wondered, if this were happening, could the hydrogen be trapped in the body and released as the object warmed up in the solar system? Perhaps the Oumuamua's peculiar motion can be attributed to the force created by the hydrogen outgassing. Bergner observed that experimental research published in the 70s, 80s, and 90s showed that when ice is hit by high-energy particles like cosmic rays, hydrogen is abundantly created and held within the ice. Cosmic rays can melt holes in ice several meters deep, turning some of the water within into hydrogen gas. The scientists said that comets are often so massive that the hydrogen has little effect on their motion. But the small Oumuamua is not like that at all. She explained that for a comet several kilometers in diameter, 
the outgassing would occur from a very thin shell compared to the bulk of the object, so it would be unlikely to have a discernible impact on the comet's composition or speed. But despite Oumuamua's diminutive size, scientists believe it generated enough force to enable this acceleration. Jenny's proposal is lovely because it is the best possible outcome for interstellar comets, as Seligman put it. To paraphrase, we had all these stupid ideas, like hydrogen icebergs and other crazy things, and it's just the most generic explanation. It's great to have everything click into place because, as a scientist, you're always trying to find the simplest explanation. The researchers believe that the same mechanism is at work in sun-approaching comets from the Oort cloud at the outer reaches of the solar system, where comets are irradiated by cosmic rays, as would be the case with an interstellar comet. The creation and confinement of H2 could be tested by future studies of hydrogen outgassing from long-period comets. According to Seligman, the case for the origin of Oumuamua's acceleration has been closed. Six other small comets with no detectable halos but with minor non-gravitational accelerations have been discovered by him, Bergner, and their colleagues since 2017, indicating that such dark comets are widespread. Bergner pointed out that hydrogen is probably not to blame for the accelerations of black comets, but that both Oumuamua and it show that there is much to be learned about the behavior of tiny bodies in the solar system. Oumuamua will be visiting Earth for a brief period of time at most. It has already returned to the abyss of space after passing across the ecliptic of our solar system. It is now leaving our solar system at a speed of about 16 miles per second and will take more than 20,000 years to do it. On cosmic timescales, that's a mere instant. It's already frustrating enough that we have trouble observing it with the best telescopes we have. In the future, scientists hope to be able to send a probe to the object. This is now impossible with available technology. The speed of Voyager 1, the fastest man-made object ever sent into space, has now surpassed 10 miles per second. Despite our best efforts with solar sails and probes powered by lasers, it seems unlikely that we will ever be able to catch it. It's possible that we just have to hang on till the next one comes. While we do have mechanisms in place to try and identify potentially fatal impacts from space, Oumuamua suggests they may not be up to snuff. However, this extraterrestrial traveler caught the scientific community by complete surprise. Its apparent course would bring it dangerously close to Earth. While we may have gotten away with this one, it might have destroyed an entire metropolis on Earth. Its destructive potential was estimated to be more than 2,050 Hiroshima bombs going off simultaneously. Everything within a 31-mile radius of the impact zone may have been destroyed in an instant. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives would have been lost. Only if it struck a major city with lots of people living there. PanSTARRS is a telescope built specifically for this purpose, but its abrupt presence signals that more research is needed. We may need to rethink our early warning systems now that more advanced systems like the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope are in the works. Only one additional extrasolar visitor has been observed in all the years since the initial discovery. Scientists believe that the first interstellar comet to enter our solar system is also the cleanest, as it avoided all stars except our own. The comet 2i slash Borisov was seen by scientists in 2019 as it zipped toward the sun. It was the first interstellar comet discovered, and only the second extrasolar visitor after Oumuamua, based on its speed and trajectory. Two additional ways that 2i slash Borisov is unique among comets have been discovered. One study looked at the coma, or envelope of gas and dust surrounding the star's core, and analyzed light scattered off dust grains using the Very Large Telescope at the European Southern Observatory. They focused on the light's polarization, or how its waves propagated through space. Light waves can go in any direction, including straight up, straight down, left, right, or any angle in between. When light is highly polarized, all of its waves travel in the same direction. During a close approach to a star, the comet's surface material can be altered by the star's radiation and winds. Like our skin when we go to the beach, Stefano Bagnulo, an astronomer at Armagh Observatory in Northern Ireland, and the study's lead author in Nature Communications, told Space.com. As a result, the polarization of the comet's coma light may be diminished. Researchers found that the coma light from 2i slash Borisov was highly polarized, indicating that the comet was less contaminated by stellar radiation and winds than others. 
Previous studies indicated that only the 1997 comet Hale-Bopp's light was as polarized as the interstellar visitors. Hale-Bopp rarely went close to the sun, Bagnulo explained. We think that before its apparition in 1997, it did it only once, about 4,000 years ago, the authors write. So the material at its surface, when we observed it, was only slightly processed by the sun. On 2i Borisov, however, light polarization was consistent over the entire object, whereas this was not the case with Hale-Bopp. Since 2i Borisov may not have traveled close to any stars before visiting the solar system, it is possible that it is an unaltered relic of the cloud of gas and dust it formed from. The striking similarity between the two comets shows that 2i Borisov formed in a setting that was not chemically dissimilar from the early solar system. Bagnulo pointed out that by the end of the decade, astronomers may have an even better opportunity to investigate a rogue comet in detail. In 2029, the European Space Agency plans to deploy the Comet Interceptor probe, which, if another interstellar object on a similar track is found, will be able to intercept it and bring it back to Earth. Comets that never pass close to the Sun are particularly interesting because their material is presumably the same when our solar system was formed, Bagnulo added. Researching them is crucial. The second looked at data from the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, ALMA, in Chile to learn more about the comet's origin and home system. According to the study's lead author, Bin Yang, a planetary scientist at the European Southern Observatory in Santiago, Chile, we want to know if other planetary systems form like our own, but we cannot study these systems down to the level of their individual comets, because comets in other planetary systems are simply too far away and too small to be seen by our telescopes. We got incredibly lucky that a comet from a solar system thousands of light years away decided to pay us a visit. Compact pebbles, 0.08 inches or more in width, were found to make up the dust in 2i Borisov's coma, the scientist reported. But comet dust is often composed of random fluffy clumps of material ranging in size from around 0.00008 inches to nearly 39 inches broad. Previous studies suggested that the solar system's comets evolved in a large region outside newborn Neptune's orbit and that the strong gravitational pull of big planets like Jupiter and Saturn determined their present places in the outer solar system. In contrast, the researchers determined that cosmic collisions near 2i Borisov's host star mashed its stuff together into thick pieces, creating the comet's pebbles. When the massive planets that surrounded 2i Borisov's star finally got tired of it, they flung it out into space. One extrasolar object each year should be detected in the future by the Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile. Even more information on these extrasolar visitors can be gleaned from the extremely large telescope being built in Chile by the European Southern Observatory, according to Yang. The prospect of discovering and studying things from other solar systems is really fascinating. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.